I'm an engineer. I'm an electronics engineer. I teach electrical and computer engineering at Portland State University. I'm also an, a space activist. I'm president of the Oregon L5 Society, which is a chapter of the National Space Society. I'm also an author. I've written a number of books on computer software. Um, probably the most well-known are SQL for Dummies and Database Development for Dummies, and a couple of other Dummies books, too. I'm a married person. I'm a father. Okay, great. Um, I guess just start out and you know, tell us why you came to this conference, what, what you were looking for. I came to this conference because I knew it would be great. I knew that there would be a lot of really smart people here, intelligent thinkers, that have backgrounds very different from mine. And I'm looking for that cross-disciplinary perspective. I'm looking for ideas that I wouldn't come up with hanging out with people like myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that. We've been talking to people about basically their predictions of the future. Do you mm -hmm. have any? Yes, I guess I do. I think there are going to be major things happening in the biological area. Uh, diseases that are now incurable will be cured. And if they aren't cured, they'll be managed and people will be able to live normal lives even though they have those kinds of things. I think really marvelous things are happening in that area right now and even more marvelous, there's going to be synergism between the biological advances and the technological in terms of uh, nanotechnology and MEMS uh, being applied in the biological area. Uh, to make things even better. I think lifespans are going to be extended. Um, lives are going to be happier, um, fewer problems. And so s I'm getting some of that uh, from some of the people I talk to here. Tell us about, you know, expound upon a little bit, some of the things that are going to make all of this advancement possible. Well, uh, one of the major themes of this conference is uh, the fact that things are changing exponentially. Uh, Moore's Law is kind of a catch-all uh, idea there, and of course Gordon Moore is one of my fellow electrical engineers. But if things are changing exponentially, that means that solutions to problems will come faster and faster. The miniaturization of electronics, being able to pack more and more transistors onto a chip, will enable electronics to be used in ways that people aren't even thinking about now because it's not physically possible now. But in a few years it will be. And the, the rate at which those kinds of things will become possible happens ever faster because of the acceleration. So I'm, I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about uh, all the things that I can't even think about now that are going to come about and that are going to um, challenge me and keep me intellectually involved in what's going on. Because there's a, oh, there'll always be a new challenge, there'll always be new things coming out that I can get involved in and that I can uh, maybe contribute to and contribute to humanity in all life. You're excited. Is there any, are you scared at all? Well, there's dangers, sure. Uh, but I choose to think that as the dangers arise, the antidotes to them will arise also. And so I'm optimistic overall. I'm, I don't have a Pollyanna attitude. I don't think that, you know, that there, bad things won't happen. I think that obviously recent experience has shown us that bad things do happen and they will continue to happen. But I think that humanity will cope with those things and that our capability of coping will increase in step with the threats that might arise. Do you think? You know, it's the exponential growth. It's one of the, the big ideas of this conference. Do you think we need to try to control that at all? I don't think you can control it. No. I think it's going to be something that's out of, out of control because so many people and so many groups of people independently of each other are all working on these things independently that there's no way to shut it down. Uh, in, the, in the debate between Ray Kurzweil and Bill Joy, uh, Bill was uh, recommending that we relinquish certain technologies because of the danger. Well, there's no way that you can legislate that. People are going to do that. That's not an option. Uh, so if that's not an option, then what do you do? You have to cope with that somehow. If, if these technologies are going to be developed, think in advance, 
what are the dangers, how can we address those dangers, and how can we be ready when those things actually do arise. Yeah, let, let's talk about that a little bit. How can we prepare? Think. Think in advance. And of course there's going to be broadsides that you don't, you don't anticipate. Nobody anticipated flying airplanes into the World Trade Center. Well, maybe somebody did. You know, maybe somebody out there, maybe somebody did. Most of us didn't, but maybe somebody did. But that person didn't get the attention, didn't get the credence that was required. Uh, obviously, the Katrina hurricane that wiped out New Orleans, there were plenty of people that anticipated that. And they were screaming loudly that this was something that was going to happen sooner or later. But those screams were not heard. Maybe we need to affect the decision makers process and saying, hey, those kind of screams, we need to hear them. We need to hear them and then we need to think about how are we going to address this? What kind of solutions can we come up with in advance so that when the bad things do happen, we're ready and we can at least mitigate the damage, if not eliminate it. What are some of the other things that you've heard at the conference that are interesting to you? What are some of the things that I've heard at the conference? One of the things that I've heard at the conference is uh, the importance of networking is increasing. And I've heard this from various people, various factors, that the way we conceive of society uh, traditionally has been hierarchical. But now with these advancing technologies, with the internet, and with other kinds of connection, that, that hierarchy is, is flattening and becoming more of a peer-to-peer -peer type of a network where information is flowing uh, from many, many hubs rather than flowing centrally down from one out to the masses. And I think that that's a major paradigm shift in the way the world will work. And I'm going to give it some serious thought as to what are the implications of this and how might I prepare myself for a world that's going to be different in that way. What haven't we talked about that you think is important to mm. include in the discussion? Probably the sociological aspect. How are people going to react? to? The, we're right at the knee of the curve accelerating change. People so far have coped with what's going on, but as things get faster and faster and bigger and bigger changes happen sooner and sooner, how are people going to cope with that? There are going to be people that aren't going to be able to cope. Uh, some of the speakers mentioned the Luddites. There's going to be Luddites, people that aren't able to cope with that. They are going to try their best to obstruct progress. Um, and how are we going to deal with that? And how are we going to deal with it in a way where we honor the concerns of those people but not allow that to uh, prevent us from having the benefits of uh, the advances that we are capable of making? Great. Very good. Okay, cool. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. I really appreciate it.